Okay, this is a youngish man, but not, not a child, not a juvenile. It's a man. And let's just take a quick look at the axial for a moment. Those of you that do quite a bit of MRI may notice there's an extra structure in here. Not this one. That's the posterior cruciate ligament. This one. What is that thing? Well, it happens to be the anterior cruciate ligament that is fat and bloody and laying down anteriorly. That's not why we're here. We're here to look at the sequela, once again, of a pivot shift and what it does to menisci. You can see a little bit of fluid in the capsule and posteriorly on the medial side is the structure known as the posterior oblique ligament of the knee or posterior ligament of the knee, which we're going to talk about at a later date, but I did want you to see it. Here it is again, seen right at the level of the meniscus. Let's go to the sagittal projection. And we have already established there's a major pivot shift with an ACL tear. There's the typical pivot shift bone injury. There is the typical pivot shift bone injury of the tibia, as well as the femur that you just saw. And you've got uh, the same bone injury in the posteromedial tibia. So let's start on the medial side. We said that the tibia will translate anterior, or the femur will translate posterior, and then slam down on the back of the stretched capsule. And that's exactly what has happened here. We've got bleeding in the capsule. And I don't know how many of you remember we talked about the sliver tear. The sliver tear is that thin, tiny little vertical tear that sits right adjacent to the capsule. And there it is. And once again, that signal will persist. It'll become much less swollen, much less hot, much less hyper intense over time. But it'll persist for many years, if not forever. So we don't want to call this a meniscocapsular separation, but it is a meniscocapsular junction, sprain or injury or bleed. And there's also a peripheral one-third red red zone medial meniscus tear. Let's continue on over to the lateral side. There's quite a bit of space here to uh, house all this blood, by the way. So let's scroll laterally now. And as we're on our way over to the lateral side, you may have noticed this big, large structure that looks like a thumb. It is the anterior cruciate ligament filled with blood bent forward. We are here at the lateral meniscus root. And the posterior attachments of the lateral meniscus, the superior and inferior fascicles, are a little bit stubby and fat. It should be a millimeter in thickness. So they're too, th they're too thick, but also the capsule, which should tether this attachment right here. That is an attachment for these two structures. That should be tethered to that. See where the tether is broken? So there has been a posterior capsular disruption. And that has allowed these attachments to squiggle up a little bit. They also are torn. If you keep scrolling right there, there's no attachment between the popliteus, the capsule, and the meniscus. There should be a perforating linear structure coming back from this triangle inferiorly and from this triangle superiorly. So the posterolateral menisco, capsular, and popliteal attachments have torn. Let's look at the popliteus tendon, because when that happens, there is frequently an injury to the popliteofibular ligament, either in the form of a rupture with a squiggly little tail rolled up in a ball, or a wavy tail from a stretch. And we have the wavy tail, known as the mermaid sign. There's the body of the mermaid, and there's the wavy tail of the mermaid, which should be a straight shot right down as a black line from here to here. We don't have that. We have a gray, somewhat waddling, wavy signal from the popliteus tendon as the popliteofibular ligament. This little stubby structure right here is what remains of the popliteotibial ligament. Let's look at the meniscus all the way near the root. Here's the root, and some of you may be struck by this structure right here, which is a swollen but present ligament of Risberg. That is not a fragment of the meniscus. That's the Risberg ligament leaving the posterior superior inner free edge of the lateral meniscus and coursing superomedial as a ligamentous structure. So don't get confused by that potential pitfall. And you can see it reattaches right back into the triangle. 
So in this case, we have injured the posterior medial meniscal capsular attachment with a vertical sliver tear on the medial side. There's our sliver tear. And on the lateral side, we have disruption of the menisco, popliteal, and capsular fascicles posteriorly, along with an injury of the popliteofibular ligament and a frank tear of the posterior capsule. Let's just take a look at the coronal for a moment because this is such a nasty injury. Just out of curiosity, the collaterals are not too bad looking. There's the tibial collateral ligament, and here is the fibular collateral ligament. So there hasn't been a major varus or valgus force or a major twist associated with this injury. Okay, let's do another one, shall we?